The future of the Minnesota Fighting Vikings receiving core is, of course, Justin freaking Jefferson, the best wide receiver in the game, as well as first-round pick Jordan Addison coming in from USC. They're going to be a beautiful one-two combination, but at OTAs right now, Jefferson uh, is away, and Jordan Addison's being held out with a minor injury, so... There's a huge opportunity and a power vacuum, and stepping into that uh, that space is Jalen Speedy Naylor, the second-year wide receiver for Michigan State, really stepping up and doing the damn thing. Uh, really impressive, both in highlights as well as you know the media jackals reporting that he's uh, he's working really well. A lot of work with the ones, uh, a lot of bowels from Kirk Cousins, and a really nice tandem with KJ Osborne at OTAs right now. Now I, I know what you're saying. A lot of people are going to say, well, OTAs don't matter. They're just practice, all that stuff. Well, they do. Uh, especially for guys like Jalen Naylor trying to make a name for themselves because guess what? Uh, them uh, looking good at OTAs, even voluntary OTAs, gives them confidence as well as gives the coaches confidence to give them a little bit more work at mandatory minicamp, at training camp, at preseason, and then you get to the regular season and then you really make your mark. So, yes, for guys like Jalen Naylor, th- these reps do matter. And uh, there's something... There's something that bugs me where it seems like with fans, uh, if a player doesn't produce right away, uh, even day three selections, which Jalen Naylor was, they're a bust. Ah, they're a bust. We got to move on. Blah, 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 blah. It's just on to the next shiny thing. We're like a cat with a freaking laser pointer, man. But it's like with. It's, it's, it's like with K.J. Osborne. You know, K.J. fifth-round pick didn't have a single offensive snap his rookie year. was benched thrice on special teams, and people gave up on him. And then he really developed into a nice wide receiver two, border, uh, wide receiver three, borderline wide receiver two. And Jalen Naylor, even though he had limited work uh, as a rookie, I, I believe in him. I, I truly do believe in his potential. And maybe it's the, the Michigan State connection. I was like, look at Kirk back in the day, like 21-year-old Kirk. Yeah, it's like, oh, uh, I'm of legal drinking age, but I'm still going to stick with the milk. So maybe the 2% if I'm thinking about uh, hitting it hard tonight. Mm. But it was uh, the heart of a lion, not a Detroit lion, as well as hair of a Jonas. It's looking good, man. But uh, Jalen Naylor came in as a six-round pick in uh, 2022, uh, number 191 overall after a, a pretty solid, you know, a little, little bit helter-skelter uh, uh, career at Michigan State, but put up an 8.09 on the RAS, ran a 4.540 uh, and, and all that stuff. And uh, as a, a rookie, played some really good special teams as well as put up nine catches for 179 yards and a touchdown. You know, a lot of it coming in garbage time against the Packers, uh, second to last week of the season, as well as week 18 against the Bears. But uh, played some great special teams, uh, w- was really good as a punt gunner as well as downing punts. Uh, one of the reasons why Ryan Wright was a phenomenal UDFA punter is that guys like Jalen Naylor uh, making him look good on punt coverage. And there's a reason why Keenan McCardle was pounding the table uh, in the sixth round to get Jalen Speedy Naylor because you know they work together during the draft process as well as you know they have a Las Vegas connection. Uh, Naylor grew up in Las Vegas with a high school Bishop Gorman. Keenan McCardle played his college ball at UNLV and uh, I think the McCardle sees a little bit of himself in Jalen Naylor where you have a you know six foot shifty uh, receiver trying to make a name for himself coming in as a late round pick and speaking of Six foot shifty receivers making a name for themselves coming in as a day three pick. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Not saying, uh, I'm just saying. Uh, and for the Vikings, even though right now they go 13 deep at wide receiver, could you pencil in Jalen Naylor as that wide receiver four for now? It's possible. Right, so you got Jefferson, Addison, KJ. That's gonna be your top three. Uh, but with Naylor impressing and getting more uh, of the workload from the coaches as they trust him more and more, it's gonna be hard to keep him off the field. So uh, I think it's an extremely good problem for the Vikings to have because guess what? If you want to have a high-volume passing offense, you have to have high-volume receivers. Uh, and Jalen Naylor doing the damn thing, looking really good, and you love to see it. I, I love underdog stories like this. Jalen Naylor, uh, if you watch his interviews, he's a, he's a good kid. He's very easy to root for. So I, I'm I, I'm glad that he's making the most of his opportunities at OTAs. But your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Jalen Speedy Naylor and pressing at OTAs. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once more the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.